On Robin Hood Radio, yes, it is Super Bowl Sunday. Yes, the Super Bowl is coming up tonight. Yes, a lot of Americans will be watching at home with their friends, and it's not the normal celebration that the country would normally have. But life goes on, and certain events do go on, like the Super Bowl and like Salisbury Winter Sports Association. We're going to go now to Willie Hallahan. It is Sporting a Cause. Sportingacause.com is Willie's site. But Willie, of course, is associated with Salisbury uh, jumping and uh, jump fest. Uh, he has been for many, many years, and I'm sure that's going to be uh, one of the things we're going to talk about this morning. The Super Bowl brings some normality back, and next weekend on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, Swasa brings back some normality. Uh, good morning, Willie. Good morning, Marshall. Thank you for that introduction. Yes, uh, lots going on this week. Um, and I actually have a couple new events to talk about. Uh, in, in weeks past, I've kind of had to recycle some of the upcoming events because there hasn't been a whole lot going on in the sporting a cause world. But uh, I have a couple new things to, to chat about. Um, the Northwest Connecticut Rod and Gun Club is starting their ham shoots uh, coming up February 21st and then for six consecutive Sundays. Um, this is the spring version of their turkey shoots, which they hold in the fall leading up to Thanksgiving. These are six weeks of events that lead up to Easter. And uh, the shoots are a mainstay fundraiser, a traditional fundraiser for not only the Northwest Connecticut Rod and Gun Club, but for Rod and Gun Clubs all over the place. Uh, uh, it's it's uh, one of the major ways they, they raise money to uh, fund their programs, and it's very important. Um, from a participant's point of view, they're uh, very inexpensive to get into. Uh, you just show up on Sunday, they're shooting events. If you have a firearm, uh, they're shotgun shoots, so uh, you're shooting at a tar target. You're not shooting at turkeys or hams, you're shooting at a target. And if you win your round, there are all kinds of prizes you can win. Uh, but it costs like $3 a round. They typically have 10 rounds in a, in a day, uh, and they, they it, they charge you three dollars a round, and that includes the shotgun shell. They provide that for you. <clears throat> Excuse me. And uh, they're family friendly. Uh, children can participate uh, with with uh, the parents there. And uh, I've I've gone to a couple of them to take pictures, and they're they're fun. Um, um, and uh, so think about it. They're, they they you register. You just show up. You don't have to pre-register anything. You just show up on a Sunday morning from from ten o'clock, and they start at eleven and and they're fun events. Um, anyway, I'll be talking about that more uh, after Jump Fest. Uh, the, the, the club is also trying to uh, organize their ice fishing derby, which they typically hold every year. Um, <clears throat> they had to cancel it last year because uh, the ice wasn't safe. They hold it over at Twin Lakes. And, um, you know, I, I don't think the ice is safe yet, but we've got some cold weather coming. Anyway, that's up in the air. I hope they can hold it. Um, it's always uh, it's named after Bill Solon, who was a longtime member who passed away a few years ago. Canaan boy. Uh, anyway, I'll I'll keep on top of that. Um, also coming up in March and late February, uh, it's polar plunge season. Uh, jumping into cold water to raise money time of year. Um, and if the event says polar plunge or polar bear plunge, that means it's a Special Olympics event. Special Olympics has trademarked those two phrases, those two names. So um, if you see a polar bear plunge or polar plunge, that means it's a fundraiser for Special Olympics. Uh, like the Jane Lloyd Fund and the, the John Rice Memorial uh, Fund uh, have a spring splash in April. That's what they, they, they call it, something different. Um, anyway, um, in the Special Olympics world, it's an international organization, but here in America, each state is in charge of their own programs. They have a chapter, and they... They organize their own sporting events year-round. They organize their own fundraisers. Uh, and so um, they, they tend to do things differently each. Um, uh, Massachusetts, for example, their polar plunges this year are going to be virtual. Um, over in the Hudson Valley, New York State, they're planning on doing an in-person uh, event, at least for the time being, you know, as we've come to realize things are pretty fluid and uh, no pun intended uh, and uh, because of changing regulations and so forth you, you sometimes you just don't know until the last minute what the, the protocols will be but anyway for the time being uh, the Hudson Valley uh, version of the polar plunges are going to be live and in person and Connecticut hasn't figured it out yet they're they're still trying to assess the situation
situation and figure out what they're going to do, but I'll, I'll keep on top of all that. Uh, so that's, those, those are events to talk about in the coming days. But uh, now, Marshall, I just wanted to talk about uh, one of the two most insp- uh, important sporting events in the world. Uh, there's a Super Bowl and there is Jump Fest. And uh, I'll talk about the latter because that's what I know more about. Um, uh, Jump Fest is coming up next Friday, uh, uh, Saturday and Sunday, the 12th, 13th, and 14th, um, with alterations. All systems are go. Everything I've spoken about before has not changed. Um, we uh, we have to cap our uh, attendance. We're we're limiting it to 400 people per day, both Friday, uh, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Um, that's when we stop selling tickets on um, on any one of those days. If someone comes, they get shut out, and they they want to take a chance. They can hang around a little bit distancing to see if somebody leaves. Uh, typically on Saturdays and Sundays, people will come in, maybe a family will come in with children, young children, they stay for a while and the kids get cold and they decide to go. So when that happens, <clears throat> someone else can come in. Uh, four people leave, four people can come in. Uh, there will be some of that. Uh, I, I just know from years at the ticket booth we see uh, a trickle of people leaving after a while. They, they watch for a couple hours and uh, or they don't have all day to spend for whatever reason. Uh, they they stay for a while and leave, and uh, that'll allow that same trickle of uh, new people to come in. We pretty much take your chance on that. But uh, um, <clears throat> I've said this before, but I will say that my I mean we're blessed uh, that we've been able to hold this at all for sure. My biggest fear, uh, by far, is disappointing people. We know we can hold this event safely. Uh, we're we're um, adhering to the state's protocols of a number of people come in, people have to wear masks, they have to distance, uh, we're not selling alcohol, we're, we, we, we're not, uh, we're, we aren't even using the cook shack this year, we're, we have food trucks coming in, all in an effort to make uh, the situation safe for people. But my fear is disappointing people, people showing up and not being able to get in. Um, um, we, um, it looks like we're going to be able to live stream our event um, we're in the last stages of organizing that. I can't exactly say it's all set up and ready to go, and yes, we're doing it, but it looks like we're going to. Uh, there are several moving parts involved in live streaming. We hear it so much, we figure, oh, it must be easy, just get, you know, just do it. Well, there's, there's um, uh, there are, uh, specific cameras you have to use, which we've uh, been lent. Uh, there's uh, very expensive equipment uh, that backs that up that we've uh, had to rent. Uh, and uh, and getting the people to do it. It's going to be three days. It's going to be a couple hours each day, and we need extra volunteers. So there are a lot of moving parts there. It looks like we're, we're going to do it, but um, um, uh, it's not 100% definite yet. Uh, I'm hoping so because that will allow people to view Jump Fest from a distance if they can't get in. And truth be known, there are people who are very big supporters of Swasa. They never come because they just don't want to be out in the cold. I, I get that. Um, but this... Uh, and, and if we enjoy any level of success at all with this live streaming, I would like to think that we incorporate it uh, in Jump Fest into the future for the same reason. People just, you know, some people just don't want to go out, uh, and they can watch it from their their homes. A lot of people love to come because uh, it's kind of a carnival atmosphere. Uh, it's like no, none other, and they just like to be in there and be a part of it. So be it. Uh, but anyway, um, uh, at the risk of belaboring the point. Um, sure we're going to disappoint people the one of the frustrations for me because among my jobs at uh, Swasa is to bring people into Jump Fest to promote it and so forth we are uh, seeing unprecedented interest this year uh, mostly via emails we get uh, emails to our website people asking questions typically in a year we'll get a handful or so well there's been a flood of them this year and almost all of them are asking about ticketing can I get tickets in advance? How do I get tickets? And, uh, and, I, and I answer each one um, uh, and say there's only one way you can get tickets, and that's to show up on a first-come, first-served basis. Um, it's it's uh, inconvenient, to say the least, but it was the only way we felt we could do it fairly. Uh, we, we toyed with the ideas of uh, selling tickets online. Um, 
we decided not to do that because after 50, 60 years of selling tickets uh, at the gate, people are going to come to buy tickets at the gate. Anyway, they're not going to hear about the online thing. And if we ended up with some situation where we were doing both, both uh, uh, tickets at the gate and online, it would be a nightmare. People, uh, people would buy tickets at the gate, we'd get our 400, and then people would show up who had bought their tickets online that couldn't get in. So the only way we felt we could do it um, fairly and uh, efficiently was to uh, sell them online, or uh, at the gate, excuse me, uh, first come, first serve, and we, we, we cap it at 400. Um, we're, as we approach the 400 person mark, ticket booth, we're going to send someone out to, um, I guess, the end of Indian Cave Road, <clears throat> so people can just let people know we're full, sorry, um, and uh, so they don't have to come in, park, walk over to the ticket booth, then find out that uh, they couldn't get in. We're going to try to um, make that uh, more available to people. Um, so, you know, that, that's the way it is, Marshall. We're, you know, we're, we're going to hold it. We're, we're grateful that we can hold it. Um, uh, I, we've learned some stuff this year. Um, you know, last year, uh, Jump Fest, we held Jump Fest. It was a successful year. And then 30 days later, <clears throat> the whole world shut down. But we got Jump Fest in. And uh, we have about a half a dozen uh, fundraisers in the course of a year. And only one of them got canceled. We, we canceled the Brewski Fest in October because uh, uh, none of the breweries wanted to... Um, send their people out into the world, and that made perfect sense. Um, it, was, it doesn't look like it could have been held safely from any perspective. Um, we were able to hold our golf tournament in September. Uh, so many golf tournaments were canceled in, in the summertime, but they started to open up a little bit when people realized we could do them safely, so we were able to hold our tournament in September. It was very successful, more successful, because we added a flight, um, and um, we did well enough so we could split our proceeds with the Jane Lloyd Fund. Our ski swap was uh, successful we, with uh, limitations. We only let 25 people in at a time, masking and all that. It was our most successful ski swap ever. Uh, the White Hart uh, Chicken Pot Pie Dinner went uh, takeout only, and they sold more. They had to cap it. At, uh, typically, they struggled to sell 50 dinners in-house, and they, they capped it at 90 this year. Our jump camp was successful, uh, and we, we have uh, 25 kids uh, every night that we have practice, which is unprecedented. And, uh, and it looks like interest in uh, Jump Fest is the same. So uh, for those nonprofits who are looking down the road and wondering whether, geez, can we hold our event or not, I can tell you anecdotally that um, uh, whether it's because there's so much pent-up demand by people who haven't been able to do events or whatever the reason, um, if you hold your event uh, and you hold it safely, I think you're going to enjoy increased attendance. Our frustration, of course, this year is that we'll have this added interest, but uh, with, with uh, attendance limitations. So anyway, uh, a long-winded uh, diatribe there, but uh, Jump Fest is on. Uh, I, ask, I would ask people to... Uh, uh, they're, they're planning on coming, especially if they have to drive some distance. I mean, we, we have people who drive an hour and a half to come to Jump Fest. They'll come from New Haven and over in New York State and down from Pittsfield and so forth. Uh, go to jumpfest.org or go to uh, the Swasa uh, uh, Facebook page uh, just to see if there have been any changes. And, um, uh, and we'll get through this. I think people, uh, as I voice my concerns about disappointing people, people say, well, you know, people are used to – uh, this the way things are nowadays. That things are different and uh, things change. And anyway, we want the best possible experience for people who come. We don't want to disappoint anybody, um, and we'll get through this. And who are you picking in the Super Bowl? I'm going with the old guy. I'm, go um, I'm, I'm going with Tom Brady. <laughs> I want Brady to win too, but I like both teams. I, I like do. I do too. I mean, so. you got to admire. Uh, you know. It, it, Clearly, uh, you, you know, you've, you're, you're more of a student of sports than I am. I'm more of a casual observer. But, you know, clearly when you have people who are the, at the top of their game, they've risen through uh, you know, their whole lifetime of, of uh, working so hard to reach uh, the, the level of excellence that they enjoy, um, you have to admire them both. You know, one's young, one's at the end of his career, or arguably so. 
so yeah, there's there's a lot to like on both teams, but uh, I'm going with Tom just because uh, I'm a kindred spirit. I'm I'm an old timer myself, <laughs> so that's what I'm going with. All right, Willie. Well, of course, Willie won't be with us next week because he's going to be working his tail off on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. But the week after that, he'll be back. Have a successful Jump Fest. And if you get that information about streaming, let me know because I can put that streaming link up on our, our radio station page and my personal page. And that reaches about 7,000 people. And we'll be more than happy to put a watch party on both those uh, both those pages if you if you can get that uh, live stream going. Bless your heart, Marshall. I will indeed. Thank you so much.